Hello Guardians and welcome to Snowbreak Containment Zone. We're going to go over the ultimate build guide for Haru starting off with her ideal build type. Okay, for Haru, you need to um, you need to be able to build around her skills, especially her standard skill and her ultimate skill. Um, all of it is going to be built around those two. And for her skills, let us take a deep dive on what she has. So for her standard skill, which is focused on damage, so Haru attacks with three fateful slices in front, each causing one hit of kinetic damage, so up to five targets in its path. You will have to maximize Haru with multiple targets rather than single targets. So Fateful Slice can pass through obstacles in their way. Passive, after Haru strikes a target, standard skill cooldown decreases by two, and two S energy is restored. So take note that she recharges faster as soon as you hit or hit a target or an enemy with her her gun so her attacks scale off attack stat which is indicated here as fateful slice damage per hit so once you level this up uh, in terms of her neuronics you can increase the damage of uh, compensatory justice uh, final damage by 20 not after hitting the target movement speed decreases by 20 for three seconds as well so she has kind of a semi control built into um, her standard skill and the other one the other upgrade is after defeating a, a target restores one stack of charge of compensatory justice will not consume s energy for the next three seconds so again this skill is bonkers this skill is badass uh, build around this skill and we'll move to the next one okay so we have support here it's a special one so haru uh, target uh, haru hits targets with uh, evidentiary slash three times Dealing kinetic damage as well, then attacks with one exec exec executory slash, dealing kinetic damage. So this one scales as well with attack stat. And if you build this up in terms of your neuronics, um, this is the one I think that you should build on uh, when, when she hits the target, apply stun for three seconds, which is a nice support skill to have if you plan to put her as a support up. But also the other one is decrease swift ex execution cooldown by one second for each target hit by executory executionary slash not executory sorry so this one is going to be um, uh, the support skill is ideally uh, next best thing she's not really built for support she will have to be your main DPS for you to enjoy playing her and for for her to shine next up is going to be her ultimate. So, ultimate skill is Triumphant Body, Victorious Blade. This is also damage. So, Haru violently slashed at the enemy targets in the wide area in front, dealing kinetic damage, gaining vi 50 victory points. The so 50 victory points is basically uh, a countdown, plus you can consume it uh, with various effects. So, one victory point is consumed per body uh, as blade state. Compensatory justice is greatly reduced and no longer consumes five, uh, sorry, S energy when used. And it creates one additional fateful slice. However, each time compensatory justice is used, it will consume an additional two victory points as the body and blade state. Compensatory justice is regarded as a standard skill instead of an ultimate skill. So, this one, as you as you um use the ultimate skill you can spam um the standard skill and you can also spam the ultimate skill up until you finish the whole 50 points or uh, victory points that they are mentioning here so again the the cooldown for the ultimate skill starts upon exiting body as blade state so this one, uh, you, th there's a there's a synergy and mechanic between uh, your standard skill and your ultimate skill. You just need to make sure that you know how to um, how to which of the skills will you be pushing once you activated your ultimate skill the first time. Okay, so once you um, you update the skill with Neuronics, you'll be getting this too. Returns one victory point each time a final blow hits a target. Each time a final blow is used, returns max of five victory points. And after compensatory just is, is in body as blade state, 
gain one stack of triumph but desire the next time compensatory justice is used there will be 5 10 20 40 80 chance to according to the number of triumphant desire stacks in the next final blow and will not consume victory points and will clear all triumphant desire stacks again this might all seem very very you know very complex but once you get used to using the <clears throat> the ultimate skill plus your standard skill depending on the situation or depending on the enemy that you have in front then you'll be fine there will be no problem with this one and last one is going to be uh tied to Deus alignment so after haru abscon died this deals damage to a target if the target does not possess a shield and its current hp is lower than 32 percent this is already scaled up because i've opened up her neuronics already so the max for this one is going to be at 40 percent uh, of Haru's attack increases by 10% for every 100 alignment index. Haru will immediately deal 2 damage to the target equal to the target's current HP. So take note that the 32 max is going to be at 40 when you unlock all of the neuronics. And for the alignment index, if you are at 300, so definitely this is going to be at 30. When you're at 4, this is going to be at 40. And it will deal. Uh, she will deal 2 damage. Um there will be a certain percentage of defense that will be bypassed because of true damage i'm not sure if it's 100 percent or even less so this is a very very nice um passive to have so you have to open up all of her skills in her neuronics okay so let's move on to the weapon of choice obviously you really need to get 16 psyche it's her um, specialized weapon. So increases increase kinetic damage by 18% upon defeating a target or using a standard skill gain corrosion effect. Increase attack by 4.2 seconds, max 5 stacks upon using an ultimate skill. And gain a skill damage boost according to the current number of corrosion stacks and refresh the corrosion duration. Each stack of corrosion increases skill damage by... Uh, 1.8 for for five seconds if triggered more than once and only your most recent effect will apply once you are once you have depleted your energy of course for your standard skill the gun does decent damage and also has um, what they call it not decent actually good damage and um, it's really really easy to use um the 12 ammo capacity this one is 13 because I used a I used a um, a part that increases um, the magazine by one. So the 12 ammo capacity is easier to use because you can ho just hold it down and it just shoots semi semi automatic. Otherwise, if you're going to be using a gun which has a six ammo capacity, then uh, it's going to be shooting once. Um, you have to click once every time just to shoot um, each bullet. So again. For me, this is preferable because, again, not all, including me, have a good aiming in this game. The other one that we have um, available is actually in the store. I haven't bought this yet. So this one is also a viable replacement, especially if you have... Um, it's called Wild Wasp Stinger. This is the four-star version that is ideal for for haru so more or less continuously use the same skill to gain the hive effect increasing attack by six percent for five seconds max four stacks this as well is going to be a 12 ammo capacity gun this is easy to upgrade up to tier five because of the copies that we we can get as long as we farm the event so that is why i'm recommending this if you need other other options for the gun I will put a link up there guys to I already made a separate weapon video recommendation or option so that you can check it out there are four options in that video including 16 Psyche Wild Wasp Stinger and the two others that I will be covering in that video so far I am using a Kitsu squad mainly because I find this uh, what they call this I find a Kitsu squad um, it has a more, um, it has a bigger damage, but it scales, the damage scales depending on a defeat of a target. 
So you have to be careful to make sure that you defeat a target so that the damage scales up. Um, the other option for um, for her would be uh, where is where is that? Okay, the other option would be Thieves Squad. Thieves Squad has a has a smaller scale at forty percent, uh, but this one is only for five seconds. But you can still re-trigger this. This is easier to you know to achieve. Um, I think more sustainable. But the higher uh, what they call this, the higher damage, the higher damage in terms of um, in terms of buffs will be with a Kitsu Squad. It's 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 harder though to pull off because you need to defeat the target for it to scale up but the upside as well that this one lasts for 10 seconds and there's a criteria there are lots of criteria here to reach like for example 10 10 points or 10 stacks then you also have um no five 10 and 30 stacks so the increases would be attack increased by 25 and kinetic damage increased by 20 percent so again this gun if you have tremendous damage, this would be perfect. Uh, no, this this gun, this uh, logistic would be perfect for you, especially if you're dealing a lot of damage. Especially if you've done more killing. The more killing that you have, that you have done, the more you could sustain these buffs. So again, I'm I'm going through with the ultimate build with a Kitsu squad, but again, you have the option to use Thieves squad in case that you feel that you cannot do. Um, quick kills to increase the buffs for a Kitsu squad. So again, Team Squad is also good, um, either of the two. But I'm going with a Kitsu squad for now. So right, also with the talent wise, I would say that um, attack would be your best bet. Secondly, would be your alignment index. Alignment index, as I mentioned, um, contributes to your day was alignment. So as you as you go higher for every hundred then there is more damage buffs for every hundred alignment index that your op has so again please make sure that you prioritize attack and alignment index also guys if you don't want to prioritize either and you want to retain only one you can also use skill haste depending on how you feel and how you use the op but my recommendation would be attack and alignment index and the third stat obviously would be kinetic damage if you can search for kinetic damage which is actually very hard as you can see here so that is my recommendation for logistics as far as her manifestation is concerned even at even at manifestation zero she is actually very very good um the first manifestation would be part of her ultimate so triumphant body victorious blade without consuming energy um is uh, for every 600 seconds but the ones that you should reach is actually an m2 so increase attack by five percent for five seconds when Aru uses a skill max five stacks repeat the triggers will reset the duration of this one so this gives her a max of again another 25 percent damage then after M2, the next that you should reach is actually M4. At least minimum M4. So compensatory justice plus one. A level plus one decreases compensatory justice cooldown to four. And as energy consumption to four. So this also makes her very energy efficient the more that you could spam her skill. Uh, if you can reach five, then the better. Because this also relates to her ultimate skill. The lower the target's current HP, the higher the damage Haru deals max increase of 30%. Again, the more damage you deal up to a point, up to the threshold that you can increase damage is actually built into Haru's kit already. So my recommendation is reach to M2, which will really, really make you happy already. Up to M4, you're going to be very, very happy. But again, at M0, she's dealing ridiculous damage already. So this is she's going to be very very good for for end game for late game as you build her with more copies okay so moving to the last would be neuronics so her neuronics guys priority would come 
with her compensatory justice cluster so please make sure that you prioritize this first the next uh, cluster that you have to prioritize is triumphant body victorious blade which is her ultimate and the last cluster to prioritize is going to be swift uh, swift execution which is her um, support skill so you won't be using her much for support skill but for the support skill um, please do prioritize this one this cluster on the right which uh, applies stun because it is going to be you know it's going to be a factor as a support um, if she can do more control then with this skill she is actually viable for a little bit of control and damage for her um, for her uh, support skill okay so with all that said overall thoughts what do I think of her um, at this point I think she's well balanced she's a well balanced OP um, wh what I mean is op uh, with a gun and skill damage both synergize well especially if you're going to be using um, a 12 what they call this a 12 ammo gun and especially if you're using this gun 12 psyche which is I think a must uh, up to a point if you really want to make sure that she deals more damage then definitely this is the gun that you should get for her balance between damage and skill so when you do her standard skill damage for the gun is very very nice as well so i don't have any complaints it's very sustainable you can sustain damage when switching between standard skill and your gun and also very viable as your main dps but she has to be no at m0 i again she's she's good but for her to be a beast take her to m2 and definitely take her to m4 okay might struggle with some bosses um i've tried using her with some bosses she's definitely gonna be okay with bosses which are not mecha and are not armored um also guys hp is a concern as well her max HP as of now, unless if you want to work with her HP, it's stuck at 27,708. So please be conscious about her HP going down when you're using her. Uh, might struggle again with armored units. Um, you'd have to be more accurate when you are shooting armored units because again, either 6 or 12, it's going to be a challenge. And I say at this point with using her for the past couple of days, she is like a cross between Wild Hunt and uh, and uh, and uh, Cornet, Fanny Cornet. Again, why I'm saying that is because of the damage output and the versatility of her skills. Okay, so um, it's just a comparison, nothing really close to how they're being played, but in terms of damage output and the way they clear out mobs and the way the skills are you know especially the standard skill compared to life's um, standard skill it's actually very easy to use and the damage output if you're talking about fenny um cornet versus hers uh if again if you're using the standard skill plus the weapon then definitely the damage output is actually more or less um comparable but i think this girl takes the cake for both of them um she is going to be your standard mob killer at this point she's the best at uh, sweeping out mobs so again if you don't have her yet please get her i'm not saying yet that she's going to be op but at this point she's the best for sweeping out or eliminate eliminating mobs so thank you very much guys uh guardians for staying this far take care stay safe this is the warden and i'm out of here